Hello, everyone. Um, again, I received some comments shows that, uh, um, you know, it's not that clear about the duration of perpetual bound. And I use this video to explain the calculations for the derivatives. It's the derivation of the formula. It's not that important. Um, in your work, it doesn't use the requires you to do the derivation, but uh, for the formula, it may um, be very useful when you do the volume management or do the asset management. So for a perpetual bound, the formula looks like this. So the duration um, equals to one plus lambda divided by m uh, and uh, over lambda. And the lambda here is the lambda here uh, is the uh, the is the market yield or yield to maturity. Um, so I just want to put it here. So lambda is the yield to maturity, and m is the free, uh, compounding frequency. So basically, you will find the duration of the perpetual bond actually is not related to the coupon payment. It's only the yield to maturity and the compounding frequency. So if we, uh, I'm gonna share my screen uh, of the calculation in Excel. So, okay, here is uh, our homework, homework four and homework five. And for homework four, it's 10%, uh, this is the, uh, Coupon payment of this perpetual bond and it's a semi perpetual semi annual coupon bond with a yield to maturity 80%, which means lambda equals to 8%. And I'm because it's a semi annual, so each year this bond will have two coupon payment. Um, the compounding frequency is two, so I mean it's equal to two. Then the duration. Of this, uh, of this uh, uh, perpetual semi-annual coupon bond is uh, one plus lambda divided by m, and finally divided by lambda again together. So that's thirteen. And for this ten percent perpetual annual coupon payment, then you know lambda is. Uh, 8%, however, the compounding frequency is one because it's an annual coupon bond and the duration is 13.5. Hopefully this makes everything uh, relatively clear and uh, thank you for watching.